Whoa! My shadows are blue, the ground is green, things are going crazy. A lot of different color schemes going on here. So 1,000. Wow, is that bright. But as you can tell, it's hitting this wall and uh, not any further than that. What's up, everybody? My name's Hyperthop GG. Thanks for checking out this video. We're going to be talking a little bit about the lighting of a level, the ambiance, the sky, the shadow colors, things like that. How to get the real feel of a level that you've created. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. I got a few more ideas, a few more videos coming out soon. Make sure you get notified for those. But let's get into it. All right, so this is a map that I built a little while ago, a little demo map. I could show you a few things on here. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, I actually want to talk about manipulating uh, props and things like that. So I'm just going to pull up a prop. I got this nice window here. If you look at this, you can go into your properties. You can shift up all the sizes right here. Uh, one way you can do it is if you hold shift and use the arrow keys, you're gonna be manipulating it this way. Up and down is gonna give me my width. And then the third dimension is gonna be home and end. You got the arrow keys and home and end. As you can see, it's um, moving in quite big increments right now to make that smaller if you use the snap to grid buttons the f5 f6 f7 f8 you press those buttons and now i'm getting a bit smaller of movement f6 it's going even smaller f5 just tiny increments so you can really get the, the exact shape that you're looking for these snap to grid things they work with a lot of things there's a when i'm using shift to change the size if you hold control you're actually going to be able to change the rotation in the same way same keys arrow keys home and end to rotate in all different ways and then again if you press the snap to grid keys you get a bit smaller of a rotation and you can get it in the exact place that you want uh, the snap to grid keys also work on terrain. You see, I got all my terrain underground right now. If I use my terrain tool, uh, if I press F8, I get a large. That was one click and the, it's coming out of the ground. If I press F6 and now I click, I'm only moving up a little bit so I can get really finite with my movements now. You hold shift and you're going to be moving down with this tool. Get it exactly where you went if you put it too high. And then for this tool, a lot of people, myself included, think that this tool is, this is the lowering tool. This is not, this is going to flatten everything to the exact point that you put it. So if I click this layer slightly underwater, I hold shift and I click. Now I've set that as my level. So everywhere I go, it just immediately will flatten it to that exact height. So now I have a perfectly flat surface. This is a flattening tool. I want to go over light entities. You use the lights. You, if you want a really nice looking level, you're going to have to use in a lot of lights, put them in the right spots. Um, there's a lot of light props, but you need the light entity. Once you get a light entity out, you see this bad boy right here. Oh yeah. Light in every direction. Just amazing. So if you press F1 while that's selected, you go into your properties. Now you can change your intensity, your radius. You can also change this to a different type. We're gonna do the point light because that's just a basic light. It's giving me light in all directions. So if I change up these, your intensity is gonna change how bright it is, you know? So if I put this to 1000, wow, is that bright. But as you can tell, it's hitting this wall and not, not any further than that. It's also not hitting this wall at all because this wall is too far away. If I change the radius then, now that it's up high, you can see this is exactly how far it's going. So because the intensity is so high, we're getting a very solid outline of where exactly this light is going. So if I change my intensity to something more reasonable, right? Let's put it down to 10. I get a bit more of a nice solid or a nice flow of a fade off right here. But now I have an idea of how far it's reaching. If I change my radius and I make it really high, it does appear brighter, but it's also just reaching much farther now. So I can make it very high, turn the intensity very low, and now I have a light, um, a, a small amount of light reaching very far. Or I can make the intensity high and make my radius quite small. And now it's only gonna be hitting a very small portion. Doesn't reach very far. So now that it, once you have your light in the position you want it, you can actually change the color as well. If you just bring this up and go down, change your color over here. Say I want this room to be my red room. Now I have a red light. So you can use colors to help identify what room you're in or just give a certain feel to a room if you don't want a just plain white look everywhere. And lastly, we'll talk about spotlights on this one. There's a few here you can go through and test them all out. The spotlight is doing what you think it's doing. It's only shooting in one direction. So now you can see it has this arrow. 
I can rotate this, hold control and use the arrow keys and rotate it in the direction that I want it to be shooting, but it's not gonna give me light in all directions. And then intensity and radius still work the same way. The difference is when I change my radius, it's not going behind. So this is not, 360 does not mean 360 behind, it's actually just in front now. So uh, if I arrow, if I turn this, face this wall, you can see it's hitting the sides here, but it's not quite hitting the back wall. If I shift it over, now it's hitting the back wall. So radius has to do with how far the light is traveling. And not only your own lights, but you can manipulate the lighting, the natural lighting in the game. You have these three, uh, these three icons here. Every map starts with these three. Let's get these blocks out of the way so I can click them, am I right? This is your sunlight right here. You click this, bring this up, sunlight, intensity, um, so I got, you know, clearly this is a sunny day. If I turn this up from five, say let's put it at eight, you'll see the whole level just gets a little bit brighter. It's gonna make my whites even whiter and the shadows remain in shadows. Let's put this to 15. You got a very, very blindingly sunny day. Five was the default, we'll put it back to that. Over here, this is fog. If you change this up, intensity is 0.69. Let's put this at say seven and you'll see now it's a very foggy day. I can't see the end of this level. If I put it to say 10, it's even foggier now. So if you want, you know, a nice cool looking level, icy cold, fresh, you can turn the fog up, use it as you will. And in the middle here, we've got the ambience. When you click this one, this is going to change a bit of the colors to the level. So. I'll back up here. I have it selected still, but as you see me change it here, you have a color pad down here. If I change this to say blue, look at all the blue in this level. Wow, that's a lot of blue. So it's changing almost the color of the whole light. The sunlight has now got a blue tint to it. Turn that down a little bit, a bit more natural. It seems to be uh, near a uh, very medium gray is natural. Uh, but again, if yeah, if you want a bit of a cool feel, give some blue. You want a warm feel, give some yellow in there. If you go too extreme, things look pretty bright. And not only ambience, but that's that's controlling a lot of the brightness. You can actually control the shadow colors as well. To do that, you got to open up your console. You're gonna type slash set global shadow underscore color. We got typos everywhere, boys. Shadow color. And then now you need to type your hex code. I don't know very many hex codes, but one I do know is red, FF0000. Type that. Now watch what happens to all the shadows. They are red. Just the shadows though. So not like ambience. When I change the ambience, right? Put that to red, everything goes red. This is just the shadow color. Kind of cool. You could get some uh, dramatic effects, put the shadow color to what you want it to be. So once you've got a map completed, you start altering these types of things and you're gonna get the level to feel a certain way and look a certain way. And another one here is sky box. I'm gonna go over how to edit the sky box. What is a sky box? It's the sky, right? Clearly we got a nice sunny day. This is the default. Where is the sun? Nobody knows, it's not on the map, but it is a sunny day. I can see the shadows. So what you do here, you open up your console, you're gonna type set global sky box. And now you need a big list of skyboxes. This is not something that you can just type whatever you want and something's gonna pop up. I'll put a link in the comments to all of the global settings in the skyboxes. Uh, you have to follow exact an exact name. So there's a list on the Wikipedia. It, you gotta type it in right here. So uh, I'm gonna go with the first one, sky box underscore dawn. Now you got a dawn kind of day. And now your red shadows make a little bit more sense, eh? So you could, there's a lot of different skyboxes to choose from. I'll go through a few just so you can see them. Skybox night three. Oh, we got a tower right here. I think we might be on a spaceship. A few are a bit more complicated. Uh, you see what I'm typing here. TMP, epic, blue, sunset, cam. Ooh, dramatic clouds. So there's a lot to choose from here. There's the sun. Shadows don't line up though, but that's all right. Speaking of which, if you need to rotate the skybox, you can do that. You type set global skybox underscore rotation. 
and now you're setting the degrees so right now d zero is the default you can see the sun is over there if i put it 90 it's gonna move 90 degrees to the left so if i go this way the oh mountain in the way there's the sun 90 degrees 180 is going to be back over here so now you can set it exactly where you want say you set your level up and you're like i want to really feature the sunset so i put it right here right outside this nice bookcase and the last thing i want to show was how to change the l u t i'm gonna be straight up honest guys i don't know what l u t stands for but i know how to change it so you go set global l u t and now you again similar to the skybox you have to type an exact figure in here if i type something that's not real then everything goes black i've turned off the lights so i gotta set something for real in here if we put here's an example of one again i'll link all of these so that you can find them you see the whole grading scale is different it's a bit bluer in here i'll go through a few just so you can see the differences a bit different on that one that one's a lot more a lot more contrast in the ground here these ones all have a bit of a blue tint to them we'll try out a couple other ones whoa my shadows are blue the ground is green things are going crazy industry two a lot of different color schemes going on here uh low contrast is another one i'll show you a couple more menu one menu test again i'm not just making these things up you can't type whatever you want there's a big old list you gotta pick from and that list is linked below but hey thanks for watching everybody i hope this video helped you figure out a bit about the lighting of a level changing not just specific lights but the sunlight the ambience the shadow colors everything like that and helps you really give the feel to the level that you are building if you like this video hit that subscribe button that helped me out i got a few more ideas a few more videos coming out soon make sure you get notified check those out also follow me up on twitch i'm gonna be editing some maps live twitch.tv slash heartthrob gg thanks for watching guys we'll see you later